Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. It's Thursday, so in another 48 hours or so, we should be in the Edo election. Um, all other things being equal, of course. Uh, and you know what I'm talking about. Yesterday afternoon, the advisory came from the police and the Department of State Security. It's a be interesting the way it was you know, delivered. Uh, com this is a combination now, not one source, but a sort of a joint source, police and the Department of State Security, um, putting out an advisory to INEC to consider the possibility, that's one word, of the necessity, that's another word, of the cancellation, of the postponement of the um, Edo election. And the reason cited was that intelligence was available to them, that um, insurgents would try to strike at soft targets and that Edo was in the catchment uh, of, of what their intelli intelligence uh, had indicated. Of course, this has sent the whole place into a tizzy, understandably. All arrangements have been made. If we're talking about 48 hours, we're really down to the wire, counting down. And of course, this has led to all sorts of speculations and counter charges. But the one thing uh, that I think is not in dispute is that, look, by definition, the, the, the services are all neutral. They, they, they are apolitical. They are supposed to be professional. And so when they come out with this kind of an advisory to INEC, the body that has to conduct the election, supervise the election, election and regulate it, um, they, I imagine, must know what they're talking about. But um, for, for the rest of us to sort of get a better understanding, we got hold of um, uh, some specialists to come and talk to us about how security agencies arrive at uh, decisions like this and um, also to sort of evaluate, if you will, um, the, in some cases, skepticism uh, that's out there regarding this advisory, which we understand will be considered by INEC today. So no decision has been taken yet, but the, uh, the, the advisory and the advice will be considered today. Okay, in that connection, I'm happy to have Colonel Mike uh, Abiodun Oladeji retired. Um, he's, um, he's a security specialist, um, and it was a one, he was a one-time uh, defen uh, deputy defense uh, advisor to the Nigerian High Commission in London. Uh, that was back to the day when Dr. Christopher Kolade was the High Commissioner in the UK. Thank you very much for coming on, Colonel. Thank you, sir. It's our pleasure. And um, our friend Innocent Chukuma. Uh, to, uh, Innocent is the regional director of Ford Foundation, but uh, the one that is more interesting to me today is that he's an election security analyst. Thank you very, very much for also coming on, Innocent. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, now, let me start with you, Innocent. Uh, 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 he, well, he's retired, but let me leave the union song to learn for the moment. <laughs> because um, your work, uh, going back to the Clean Foundation, um, usually it's research-based. Sure. You, you, you know, and um, you used to come up with um, your opinions, researched opinions. Uh, that is the body of the uh, Clean on um, the state of affairs uh, going into any elections. Now, tell me about this. What was your thought when? when you heard of this advisory notice put out by the police and jointly put out by the police and uh, the Department of State Security? I think it's important to say first that when security agencies, especially the one in charge of internal security, like the police and uh, the Department of State Security, come up with an advisory uh, of this nature, it should be taken seriously. Uh, if you look at it against the background of um, recent elections we've had out of the, I think about 139 elections that uh, INEC has uh, um, organized under this current uh, administration, 21 of them had been declared inconclusive on the first ballot. And the main reason cited for that was violence or threat to violence. So coming against that background and having this kind of advisory two to three days to the election, mm. it should be taken seriously. Mm. Having said that, the manner in which the advisory was delivered and the timing of it mm -hmm. uh, leaves a little to, be desired, to right? be desired. And why am I saying this? Yesterday, the INEC Interagency Committee on Election Security that comprises representative of all the security agencies met 
with stakeholders, including civil society. This meeting ended about 3 p.m. yesterday. The police was represented by no less a person than the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of operations, Mr. Habila Joshua. And they reassured everybody that they had put everything under control for mm -hmm. a smooth election. Yes. Few minutes, less than an hour after that uh, reassurance was given, we, uh, this came up. Yes. And also, interestingly, CLEAN had also organized an election security threat assessment in Edo. Uh, CLEAN, by the way, uh, is yes, an uh, Yes, Center for Law Enforcement Education in Nigeria. And this report was released on uh, Tuesday. They um, identify some trouble spots that uh, needed to be nipped in various uh, constituencies in the area and also advised that all role players in the elections, especially INEC, need to be there on time, bring their materials because it's not coming on time and inadequate materials that threaten uh, law and order. The same thing with the police. But they concluded that they expect a smooth uh, election come Saturday. Exactly. So that is why a lot of people are a bit the, the, you know, it, confused it, it, about it, it, the current day. Uh, <laughs> and this is where I now come to the Colonel. Um, Colonel Mike, so you just heard it. The INEC itself has its own kind of security, uh, mm. security committee. Mm. Uh, the police are not just represented, but at a level of, you know, uh, an assistant inspector general deputy. of police. Uh, deputy mm. inspector general of police. And then as soon as they had finished their business, reassuring all the stakeholders that um, all seems to be set, and um, they assured everybody that everything is under control. And then suddenly another branch of, of the services, mm -hmm. namely the police, and this time the police in conjunction with DSS, say that INEC should consider the possibility of the necessity. I like the, the consider <laughs> possibility of the necessity to, to postpone, postpone the, the election. election. How does, how, how does that happen? Between the services, there, is there no coordination so that we know what's going on, so that the whole thing doesn't look as messy as some would say it is looking at the moment? I don't think so. What I want to say is we should not be too much in a hurry to take decisions. We need to evaluate the credibility of the information that has been passed before they will come up with the decision that ah, this election has to be postponed. Let me take you back to the 9-11 in the US. The government of the day had information, adequate information about that Twin Tower bombing. But because of uh, maybe not giving it a necessary consideration. A necessary consideration. We lost over well over four thousand people. Well, when you say that, um, I, I imagine that what happens is that when intelligence is received and presented to the appropriate uh, authority. They have to evaluate it and come to a decision on, it is by, after all, intelligence. Come exactly. To, come to a decision as to whether it is a real threat or, or a not. weak threat. A threat or not. Uh, yes. The reports that came in said they have credible, credible, qualified, credible report that uh, they are likely to be insurgents, insurgents mm -hmm. attacking uh, soft, soft stores, soft, soft, soft targets, yes. uh -huh, soft targets, and uh, Edo state is uh, likely to be, or it's one of the targeted areas. We should not just overlook Even though they it. were talking about the Salah celebrations, but then the proximity of the elections to the Salah celebrations is probably what now led them to extrapolate, is it, as it were, and say, look, you can't be too secure, you can't be too, too safe, uh, maybe. Is, is, that, is that their thinking? Uh, well, you, you weren't part of it, so it's probably not right for me to ask <laughs> you what their thinking was, but this is because of you. If the, we say that there's no, uh, there's no election that is what the blood of any Nigerian, okay. we could say yes. Okay. Where even one death is too many. Too many. On the other side, 
Yes, we've gotten the information. Before they could come out, the information has been processed. And the source has been vetted. All we need to do is to put a formidable security in place if we still want the election to hold. Colonel, sorry to interrupt you. Yes, Give sir. me your impression of um, uh, what, I, what I get as a, uh, what I seem to, the perception in a number of quarters out there that wait a minute, this is the government, they know, uh, they've politicized this whole uh, idea, that uh, this is to push the election back so that there's more time to do more organization and all of that. Uh, the, what would you think about that kind of notion? Uh, um, how far my little knowledge could carry me, I don't think the government in power today mm -hmm. has any hand in it. Mm -hmm. It is a general mindset. That you can't trust the government. That you cannot trust government. Mm. Even if they are giving you the best. We law we law belongs to different political parties, different political organizations. And you know generally that anything that not suits you, you read you have a political reading to it. The DSS and the police. Just like you rightly said at the beginning, they are political. Apolitical? Yes, apolitical. They, are, they have specific rules and duties as prescribed in the Constitution. But because we are generally biased, mm. Mm. Well, you, you have to admit that Nigerians have been shown, as we say locally, they have been shown in the past, they've been shown sense by governments. Um, uh, innocent, I, I, I bring you back to uh, the, the previous administration, and I don't by that really, I'm not, I don't mean that uh, the President Jonathan's uh, uh, regime alone. Um, generally, the, the, the forces have tended to, um, shall we say, dance in a kind of way that has led people to say that, well, what do you expect? The, the, he who pays the piper dictates the tune. So that has been in the psyche of our people even before the last administration. And so probably when people now begin to say similar things, it's not out of character. You know, there's uh, a saying that contest is everything in security analysis. And in our own contest, you wouldn't blame people who sometimes doubt this kind of uh, The sincerity of Because uh, as right. recent as um, February last year, we were going into an election and uh, uh, security agencies, uh, especially then the National Security Advisor, had this kind of, in fact, that one went beyond advisory, mm -hmm. was to, if you like, instruct that this election should be postponed mm. for six weeks to enable them to deal with a situation that would... Um, and it uh, happened, prevent. by the way. And it happened, you know. So coming from that, and two, three days to the election, you have a similar thing. People we we'll put two and two together. But again, uh, what I want us to, want to return us to, we are not challenging the credibility or otherwise of we, this We don't even have the way we've all to do so. the management. Mm -hmm. The management, we've always had problems with management of uh, strategic information. information. It happened in the Northeast. What led us to Boko Haram? A simple situation where there was an operation in which the police and the military were supposed to be working together. The military arrested uh, the key suspect, told the whole world that they've handed over to the police. Police on their own side came back later with a story. And that is what led to this whole thing. And we're saying you have an interagency committee on election security that is made up of representative of all the principal security agencies. They went into a meeting that ended by mm. 3 p.m. That's, that's, and you that's couldn't okay. infuse that platform to make this uh, information available. You waited until they reassured the public. One hour later, 
you come up with this. So the question so is, a communication is gap. it that this gap. intelligence was gotten a few minutes to the time of its release? If that is the case, how much time did they then have to properly analyze it and discern that it was credible enough to interrupt a process like this that millions of naira, if not billions, yes. if you also include the expense yes. of political parties, yes. Yes. Is, is going to cost a lot of stakeholders a lot. And that is what we are quarreling with. But I have no problem, as I said in mm. Inception, that mm. whenever you have an adversary of this nature, looking at the context, we should take it seriously. Mm. But it behoves on the agencies as professional and disciplined organization to do better work at management. Now, the communication of information, Colonel, uh, which I imagine, as far as the services are concerned, not just the army, all the services, it's crucial. Information is everything. Very, it's very. It's everything. Very, know? very. And um, the, the uh, committee, the inter-services committee, uh, security committee that um, Innocent was talking about, it has the police and all other agencies involved. They're, they're all represented. So how that information, how these guys, who are the specialists in that committee, uh, didn't know that something was in the offing, mm -hmm. uh, so much so it was completely blank that they were re reassuring the electorate and all the parties that um, we are now set, everybody is hung, everything is hunky-dory. And as he said, only minutes later, just and the committee is known to the authorities, known yeah. to the inspector general, yeah. known yeah. to the chief of army staff, known to everybody. Uh, yet the committee was left high and dry, so to speak, mm -hmm. and quite frankly embarrassed. Uh, it, it, the, the, the committee is in a very embarrassing position that uh, having spoken on behalf of the services in that way, and then another branch of their own service is now is now saying this. It begins to really make us wonder how prepared we really are for this election security wise given what you've said earlier that we should not be too hasty and we should not the police the security all the uniform services are apolitical they are not members of any party they should not have an interest one way or the other the only interest that they have as has been pointed out with internal security is that everybody's life and right to vote and freedom to vote is assured so the, the, this would seem to be making a mess of the whole thing. I want to believe that at the initial stage, when the security group met, they did not consider the importance of the threat. Uh -huh, okay. This is a theory. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a theory. Mm. They did not consider the importance of the threat. You have information on the surface, you deal with it on the surface. There's need for you to go in depth. I'm sure the later pronouncement came after a detailed study of the threat analysis. Uh, that is why I was saying that didn't they have, it wasn't it incumbent upon them to advise the inter the security body of INEC that uh, before you guys go on air, uh, we, we, are, we are considering something and uh, can you just delay that your meeting so that we can be sure what we're talking with. That's the communication I was talking about. Mm -hmm. that, that communication might have made those people advise INEC that um, INEC, this meeting, I don't think we can have it for another couple of hours. We, we, are, we are waiting information that is being processed. I'm, I'm just speaking as an ordinary man because, uh, as I said, uh, if the uniformed people can't get their communication straight, uh, God forbid, if it were in a battle, you can imagine the calamity. But it has happened in the past that you see uh, different uh, security groups <laughs> working. <laughs> across, almost uh, yeah, across Exactly, opposites. exactly. But uh, I think of uh, late, that being some kind of improvement, I will suggest we improve on this. Yes, yes. Because right now... You cannot a... work in isolation. You work in synergy. I have an information that I know you need. I should be able to pass information to you, to process it, maybe to another organization. When we work, 
a synergy, we'll get a better result. But you don't think the government, because th that, that part about people immediately swing in and say, ah, oh, it's the government that has gotten the military, I mean, the, the, the security to do their bidding. You say I, want that? To, I want to say it that the government has no hand in it. You mean uh, uh, an information of this nature will be available to security agencies and the, the CNC will not be informed? The first person to be involved is the... So what are you the, saying that the government the, is not uh, No, that's backing, uh, backing, backing mm -hmm. the cancellation. Uh, well, postponement. The postponement, <laughs> rather, the mm -hmm. postponement, mm -hmm. rather. Yeah, okay, one moment. Let, let's, let's take the package that we put out just to refresh people's memories, uh, minds in case they didn't see it yesterday. Uh, we are appealing to INEC, which has a legal duty, which has a legal duty, I want to emphasize that, to regulate elections in the country, to consider the need for possible postponement of the date of the election in a do state in order to enable security agencies to deal decisively with the envisaged risk threats. It is our strong resolve that security agencies need, to be need, not, need not to be distracted from ensuring a peaceful and secure Nigeria now and always. We are in Benin. But whatever the case, the Commission will take admission swiftly and communicate. Uh, to the Nigerian public. That's all I can say on this note. Once again, thank the politicians, the civil society organizations, candidates and parties in the Edo election. That I was looking forward to Edo being a model for conduct of successful, credible, fair electoral process. My optimism remains in spite of this development. And all I've had here uh, is a further affirmation of my conviction that that is going to be the case. So we'll come back quickly, and we hope that the same understanding and the spirit of camaraderie will prevail. Okay, so, so, so there we have it. And, um, well, the information was passed, uh, as we've been saying. And it looks like INEC is saying, fine, um, I'm hearing this now. We're hearing this now. <laughs> We're going to have to process this and take it further uh, before we come out from where we are. The police was talking about, um, the police spokesman there was talking about uh, the, the need for the services not to be distracted from their principal objective, which was maintaining security. And I wonder what, what could have been a possible distraction. Maybe, maybe these very situations that we are discussing this morning about suspicions and uh, the other mindsets. Mindset <laughs> well, uh, in the context of the statement, it obviously means that uh, allowing the election to go ahead will be a distraction because you're going to have a mass movement of people. Yes. Okay, that's 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 another uh, that, which, okay. which will be the soft that's, target. That's a possible, the soft yeah. target they are, they are talking about. about. But uh, you could also look at it from the other perspective that. Uh, on election days, there is ban on free movement of persons and goods. And the only vehicles that are allowed to apply are those on electoral duty with proper inscription. So, I mean, if the whole uh, feeling is that we need a space to target these people, mm. um, a day where people are at home, only those who are going to vote mm -hmm. will be in specific places. Mm -hmm. Leave the highway free for you to track whoever is coming to. But I, I but, don't but, want to go Exactly. There. These that are the things I that still they will believe go into. That, I still believe that the intelligence for it to be made public should be credible enough <laughs> and we should respect it. INEC said they are going into a meeting today mm. to take a decision on the basis of the advisory they received. Uh, so so it, it goes back to this whole matter about how information is um, handled and disseminated. I think that's tremendously important. Mm -hmm. um, so that, because as you said, Innocent said earlier that uh, context is everything. Oh, yes. And um, the, the way information is passed, because you see, there's no stranger, there's no foreigner in, in, in all of the people involved. Mm -hmm. So we know ourselves, we know exactly. our mindsets, we know conclusions we're likely to jump to. And um, that's why I, I think all of these need to be taken into consideration. And when the police have done what they have done, said that, look, no need to be distracted. We have a job to do. Uh, they are saying that it's not in the best interest of everybody to continue with this election. Mm -hmm. 
INEC seems to be saying that, okay, we're hearing this for the first time. Mm -hmm. We're going to consider this a bit further mm -hmm. uh, before we know where we are. But in the meantime, I wonder what the, all the political parties, uh, I mean individuals that are involved, because Edo State is something of a grudge match in some minds. Uh, so the stakes are very, 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 very high. And um, so it's, it's understandable that um, there will be these misgivings. But perhaps the statement that INEC will make shortly because it has very little time to make that statement, whether we still go or not to go. Um, all of it, 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 this is a study in communication dissemination, if you, if, 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 if you, if you wish. Yeah. Uh, if I may come in, whatever meeting that the INEC is going to have today, mm -hmm. all the political parties' representatives Must will be. be there. Yes, 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 yes. So they won't take decision mm -hmm. in isolation. All the political party representatives will be there. So it'll be as transparent. They will all as agree. They'll be able to evaluate. Evaluate. Maybe by definition, intelligence by definition is not something you bring to the marketplace. So oh, may, no. may, maybe that is why, uh, when this meeting happens and the all the stakeholders, all the parties involved hear all of this, we'll then hear from not just the not just INEC this time, but also the representatives, you know, of of the political contestants, uh, okay. what they feel about the whole matter. I think. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I believe in briefing the parties, it would um, help the credibility and integrity of the, uh, of the agencies to uh, provide um, some detailed information. Sure. Because uh, in all the attacks of Boko Haram and mm. other insurgents, Edo had not figured it hasn't. in it. And we are, but the police is pointing at that. Uh, we I are, think in we the also larger operating at a time when... Uh, the insurgents are uh, supposed to have been significantly degraded mm -hmm. and their capacity mm -hmm. to launch large-scale operations in right. you know, minimize. So, okay. so they're all moving from not to be considered. To, uh, so so <laughs> all of these things have to be considered. You know what? We'll, uh, I've got to go on a short break now, very, very short. We'll come back and then it'll be your turn, uh, as usual. You weigh in on these matters. We'll take your calls when we come back. Okay, welcome back. We've got Colonel Mike Abiodun Oladeji retired in the studio. He's um, a security specialist and uh, Innocent Chukuma is regional director of Ford, but he's uh, also an election security analyst. And uh, we're looking at the implications of the advisory coming out from the police and DSS. That's the way it was packaged, police slash DSS, advising that INEC should consider the possibility of the necessity to uh, postpone this election. Now, INEC hasn't indeed given any such indication. And so, as of this second, the election is still on because INEC hasn't spoken to the contrary. Uh, but then, all ears, and not to mention eyes, are going to be tuned towards uh, INEC to hear what exactly they... So, it's, it's your turn now. You, you can come out. You can... Um, oh, oh, Mr. Dede is on the line already. Good morning, Mr. Dede. Hello, good morning, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, well, um, on this uh, adult security situation, what me I want to say is that, because I've had a number of people complain that uh, why is this election being postponed? Why don't the security agencies find a way of preventing any security challenge? What matters, as far as I'm concerned, is security of life and property. You know, let the election be postponed if need be, and if the security agencies feel that they can handle the situation, let them ensure that they protect life properties of citizens. We shouldn't record a single death due to this election. We have had enough of death and fails and uh, and uh, uh, bring Gandhi just because of election. So I want to appeal to our security agents to do everything within their means to prevent the loss of life mm -hmm. and property in this election. And uh, our people called INEC names. They said that uh, they used 
to be inconclusive, INEC now they are postponing elections. I don't know where we blame INEC in this matter now. Because as far as I'm concerned, INEC has been excelling since the, the new man came into power. And I believe he should be, we should rather applaud them rather than critique them. All because right then. We used to happen that whenever elections are held, no, no matter how terrible the stuff is, they will just say, we should let them go to the tribunal. But now, we will see that men, most, men, many cases are not even going to the tribunal again because INEC will insist on doing the right thing and ensure that elections are credible before the elections results will be announced. All right. So I want to say some up to INEC and I want them to continue this way. Let All right. elections continue to be inconclusive as long as Nigerians are not doing the right thing and not push it to the tribunal for them to go and be making money of the politicians. Okay, so so thank you very much, Mr. Dede. So in effect, what you're saying is that well, let's let's not jump to conclusion conclusions. Let's wait on INEC. The point has been made again that we've already made in studio that there should be no bloodshed as at all, not even in one case as a result of this election. That's that's the least we can expect from our security uh, folk. And um, uh, so. When they've spoken the way they've spoken, we've been advised from studio here not to jump to conclusions. Wait for competent uh, people to evaluate the reasons that they have advanced. And uh, uh, right now, probably, the, I don't imagine they're getting very much sleep since yesterday uh, because it's very, very urgent. The election is on Saturday. Uh, nobody has dismantled anything to the best of our knowledge. All stations seem to be go. In fact, before this troubling advisory came, as you pointed out, they had just been reassured yeah. that yeah. everything is, uh, is, is fine. Yeah, every, uh, and security is assured the police are on top of their game and all of that, and only for this to come out. But it would be a matter of great regret if, for whatever reason, this were to be ignored, and God ever forbid uh, something untoward should happen. Uh, Colonel, you, you remarked about 9-11 uh, and some US. other instances where in, uh, security reports, intelligence reports were not given the weight that they, desired, that, that they deserved. And um, you, know, in the, you know how they say Consequences. hindsight is 2020 vision. Yeah. So uh, in, in that sort of a sense, we, we need to be careful. Although it is, you, uh, Chukma, you pointed out that you understand uh, the Nigerian who has been coming through the decades and has seen governments come and go, has seen INEX from Federco to INEC. Uh, so uh, everything is not exactly the way we'd like it to be in terms of transparency and integrity. Mm -hmm. And so it's uh, something of a, it's, it's evolving. Sure. Uh, uh, Colonel, you made the remark when I suggested that, how about the speculation that government is involved? You said, that, look, as far as you are concerned, personally, this administration, uh, you, you, you doubt. It's not the kind of thing that... To the get it very involved. Mm, well, to the extent that any government can be trusted anywhere in the world, governments are known to, you know, feather their own nest and all of that. But uh, someone else is coming in. Okay, uh, Mr. Yakub, but not our regular Yakub. Mr. Yakub, this time is in Abuja. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Yori. Um Hello? Hello, thank you for calling in. Go ahead, please. Uh, good morning, Mr. Yuri, and good morning, the white man there. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you are using the, the, the style of our Yakub in the Dokwemu? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Actually, even though we, the, the INEC chairman did not come out and declare that the election has been postponed, but we already have the confidence, 100% sure, that the election will be postponed. And if this Why, election why do you say that? Why, why do you say that? You can't expect the security, the, the, the security men. You know, it's a partnership between security and INEC. That is election in Nigeria and everywhere. If the security will come out and advise you that the place is not fit for election, definitely you have no option than to postpone the election. Although they didn't come out to postpone the election, but we know that the election is going to be postponed. We have that assurance. But then, if the election is being postponed, I want to tell you that honestly, the reputation of this INEC will drop a bit. That is because just of recent, they conducted election in Meduguri. Am I right? Yeah. And we had of no case of any killing or yeah. anything. Being that aside, you cannot compare Meduguri with Edo State. 
You want to tell us that you want to postpone election because of terrorism in Edo State? No, we've never had any case of terrorism in Edo State. We've only had of terrorism in Meduguri, Yope, and Adamawa State. An election has been held in that place successfully. <laughs> Look, I don't advise them to, to postpone this election. Let the election hold. Thank you. Have a quality day. Indeed. Thank you very much. Well, 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 <laughs> how say you, Colonel, to that particular perspective? Uh, uh, like I said at the beginning, we have different mindset. Okay. I would suggest that we respect the views of the security agents. Just as uh, Yakub was saying that, well, he, he said he will be surprised if the security bodies responsible for, for, for just that are advising against a thing. Uh, he seems to be saying he will be surprised. And because of that, he has concluded that this election definitely is to be postponed. We cannot stay in the studio we here. Can't. But but look at his logic. <laughs> uh, that is thinking. Who, 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 who knows better than than, than the security champs? Uh, what is safe yes, or not is what exactly, is not safe. Exactly. Exactly. Who knows better? Nobody. If the politicians do not know better. So it's that the, the option now is for the politicians' bosses. They're, they're, those are their bosses to say you're overruled. We shall go ahead. And that I think is what he is saying that. Uh, he, it, it will be yeah, if strong. I may come in sure. uh, here, you see, when you have a, a hammer, everything begins to look like nails. That's what security <laughs> is. And that's why the, like whole, that. the whole concept of uh, civilian leadership <laughs> yes. and subordination of security services under democratic leadership is important. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is a credible um, intelligence from the perspective of... Um, the security agencies, it also needs to be weighed against other contesting interests and priorities. Yes. And it is important that INEC demands a cogent, detailed explanation of what these threats ah, are. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. And, the, and, and then security guys the must be prepared. Are taking Otherwise, by now confidence. they are carrying out if, the, the if, analysis if, of the threat. If, if the, exactly. If the security guys do not have all of the answers and then some for mm -hmm. INEC, mm -hmm. then their own integrity and credibility mm -hmm. is at it's stake. stake. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now we have um, the other Yakub from Dokwemu following the Yakub from Abuja. <laughs> um, uh, thank you very much for calling in, Yakub. Yakub. This is Yakub from Dokwemu. Uh -huh. I have put you on. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, sir. And then good morning to your guest. Uh, let me start by saying that I disagree with uh, my ministry calling from Abuja that uh, uh, election should, should, you know, should go on. Why am I saying that? See, do you know that this election that is uh, postponed? If it we, hasn't been postponed yet. Uh, I, I, my own kind of advice is that I make sure not hold that election. For one reason, sir, the reason is this. Police are not annex, they are working hand to hand. You cannot conduct a election in station where police and DSS telling you that security threat is about to happen. If, whether it is true or it is not true, so if you are new finance, you go ahead. Believe in me, you if not is going to happen before. I can tell you something will happen. For for them to know that police will not come that we already said it before that security threat is about to happen. If before there is no any security going to happen, but for that purpose, that police already made a statement that something is going to happen when you go on with the election. Yeah. And then I like should not go on the, for that election. But if they decide to that hey, police and then they carry on that election, so you already write me down, something else will happen. And then police will not come on Monday and then on Tuesday, rather. Telling Nigerian citizens that we already tell her that this country is going to happen here we are. <laughs> a lot of people have been dying. I let this again with us and then they carry on. They should not go on. Okay, uh, okay, I go. Uh, uh, have uh, this opportunity to prepare for Monday. They are going to catch. Um, uh, th thank you very much for calling in, Yakub. And Yakub's perspective seems to be that. Um, uh, not that he put it that way, it's almost like a fait accompli uh, that, look, if the security people have spoken, uh, how will somebody else who is not as specialist as they are come and say, we don't think so? Sorry, we don't think so. And that is the simple, if you want, simplistic analysis that 
uh, he is saying that, and, and that the, also the Yakub from Abuja saying that um, he will be surprised if this election proceeds. And uh, Yakub has now fleshed that out further by saying that uh, if, if when something if something happens, what do you see, expect the police to say? Did, see, they will say we told you. See, I don't envy the situation in which INEC has found itself. It's, it's like between a, a rock and a hard place. A huh? devil's mm. alternative. Whichever decision you take is going to be a challenge. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, which is why uh, all stakeholders need to be brought on board in this discussion they're going to have so that whatever decision they take is a consensus because it's going to cost the political parties heavily it is. if you look at the people who are engaged on election duty they are like daily paid laborer they are engaged yeah. and they have to be paid whether election is postponed or, or not. not and or if not. you look at the constituencies the polling station the world in which the parties are going to deploy across it's running in billions. So it's going to be a tough it's decision either to, way. Precisely. It's going to be a tough precisely. Um, blessing, good morning. Thank you for calling in, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Good morning, ma'am. Please, I believe the police, they are the security in this country. And if they should come out and say that we should postpone this election, I believe for the first time we should even trust them and listen. Because that means something is wrong. You know, if you know how time in this country, if anybody should come to TV station, allegedly, allegedly, someone, if someone will not make sure their name. You said someone, someone, so what is there now is that since they come out, they said they should postpone. It will not cost anything. Health will not roll. Heaven will not fall down. If it is what don't they postpone a presidential election since 2015? How many elections will postpone in this country? The Jews were we can't do it. We did not die. Everyone did not fall down. So this one they've not conducted. Let's postpone it and postpone it. If they don't have any ED agenda, they should postpone it. And if they bribe people, they give them money. They should continue bribing them. I pray God will intervene. They will be surprised. These people that you don't even think that will win this election. Because right. this PDP and APC, their own is too much. They are not the only one in this country. Are they the only one that are too much? Oh, okay. All right so, then. Now they are telling us on different things. They will get there again. They will start telling us because they know Nigeria. We are smiling and sun free. Do you know what is going on now, Mr. Yori? Somebody is giving his daughter out for a bag of rice, and these same people will come. They want to campaign. They will bring musicians, start dancing. Is that what they want to tell us? At the end of the day, we will start dancing. They call me. Your robot say, "Yeah, what about the job? He no no man will know." Is that what they are telling us? All this nonsense. They should prove money. And do anybody that is coming to give us more hardship, God will not even let them win. Uh, yes, <laughs> my God. <laughs> blessing. Oh, you really have, you know, you don't vex this morning. Thank you very much for calling in. A again, that same line of logic that, yeah. wait a minute, who's the specialist here yeah. in, in security and preventing violence and preventing uh, tragedies of this nature? And uh, they have spoken. So that's the sense in which I said that this is almost like a fait accompli. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you, uh, because the alternative, of course, is to see us coming out of this meeting mm -hmm. uh, that they're going to be holding yeah. and saying that, okay, as a result of this meeting, um, mm -hmm. we decided that let the police, well, thank you very much, but no, we're, mm -hmm. we're going ahead. Mm -hmm. we, we will find a way to resolve the matter. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are going to say that's, that's not going to happen. Uh, so um, do you think it's probably best to begin to prepare our minds and as you, madam blessing said it won't cost anything it will cost plenty as a matter of fact oh yes it will cost logistics. plenty even more on the, the side of the the yeah, it's going to cost everybody that have been put in place exactly yes uh, 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 monies that have been spent if you postpone even if it is for two days yeah. uh you still are going to incur costs but put side by side with that is the fact that not, no amount of money is uh, uh is blood of any Nigerian. Yes, it's not it's, it's not worth the blood of any any Nigerian. Any, any Nigerian. Yeah. And even if it is one that is prevented, it's mm. it's more than enough. Um, um, Kevin is calling in from the UK. Good morning, Kevin. Uh, good morning, Mr. Falari. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, thank you, and um, thank you for everyone in the studio. Thanks okay. a lot. Yeah, um, please. Um, I just want to support everyone that said that election should be cancelled. I am no, postponed. Actually. Postponed. Yeah, it should be postponed for every reason. How will security give um, a report? And people, yeah, people want that report to be jettisoned. They, they get their advice that there will be security threat. And anyone 
He's saying, um, you know, I, I, I just saw one on TV yesterday, a human rights um, or civil society man who was condemning Buhari, naming Buhari, you know, that he's the one behind the blah, blah, blah. You know, I see no reason on earth. I don't know why I would take security uh, issue in Nigeria. The security have come up. They said they're security threat. If anyone's son, anyone's brother, anyone's daughter is hurt during this election, if they postpone it, I next should be held responsible. Because they have no reason, no moral justification to go on with that election. And please, can I ask um, the experts in the studio to help us explain, perhaps um, in a, maybe intellectually or logically or maybe um, politically, why any person or any man we want this election to continue, or that election to hold. Okay. With, with all the threats, with, you know, with all the threats. Yes. What is the police report? Okay. What is the, uh, what is the interest of any delegate or of any uh, aspirant? Mm. Thank you very much for calling in from the UK, um, uh, Kevin. Um, well, those that are against the position from just looking at news reports uh, going on the internet, uh, social media, uh, it's the local, is the usual speak about, oh, it's because this party thinks it is not going to win. That is why it has got... So that is the kind of talk that's, that, that we've, we've heard. Um, but when you... It's, it's hard to rationalize it logically. Yeah, you see, my view is that um, INEC should take seriously the advisory from the security agencies. But in taking it uh, seriously, they need to to demand fuller mm -hmm. briefing. And, be totally and why, am I, in their why, why am I saying that mm. I don't want our democracy to be a hostage of security uh, ah, shenanigans? Ah, 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 because okay. immediately we go down that path, mm -hmm. then it becomes, it becomes a card that will play. Literature. Because in the literature, there is what is called the um, concept of police fetishism which is the ideological mindset within security agencies, that without them, the whole society will uh, you know, collapse. But the, the reality is that policing as an activity involving everybody has been on for time immemorial, but police and security agencies as an organization is a recent phenomenon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we shouldn't but, conflate but the two. But this happened uh, with uh, Dasuki yeah. in the last election, remember? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, he, he virtually, single, almost single-handedly, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, pushed the election forward, and yeah. we, it, it happened. Uh, Taufik Oshobo, good morning. Good morning, Uncle Yari. Thank you for calling in. And good morning to my brother in the city. Sure. Uh, you see, this is the only thing that happened is that Last week, or last week ago, during the campaign, which I watched on your, on your, on your, on your television, PVC, I, the, the, the present governor, which is, uh, I don't know, I don't know, okay, I, I don't state, he says that the political party that says that anyhow, or do or die, that they have a plan, if we are not winning, we ensure that that election will not count. So from that, I think the security agents are coming too late. How do I mean? If the government should have known such things last week, which means just know that there is a danger. And he has put an alert. What are the security men doing? That is why they are allowing the Nigerians now isolating. By thinking maybe the current political party at the federal level that is trying to see maybe they are not winning, and that's why they are now saying the election should be postponed. As a security expert, you should know if there's been some, something to happen about a month, you should start seeing some signs. I think our security experts should, 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 should move ahead from where they are for mm. doing all the five to get approached. Okay. For instance, if this thing has been announced last week ago, nobody I mean, nobody has missed anything. But why is there three days to election? Okay. okay, thank you very much for calling in. It wasn't very clear to me, but um, did, did, I, did I get that he's saying that we need to listen to the security chaps? Yeah, he supports postponing the... Uh, he supports uh, supporting postponement. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, 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 Yes, yes. What the, did you say? The, the clamor for postponement by people we know, and we have said it in the studio here, times without number, that the blood, uh, no election. Is worth shedding blood for. Yes. I want the INEC to carry along all the stakeholders. That's very, very important. It is very, very important. It is germane. 
for their own credibility. Uh, for their own credibility. And also the credibility of the security guys. And the credibility of the security agencies. Mm. The security agencies should not give rooms for doubt. as to the credibility of the information they are giving out. It's even unfortunate that we're talking this way because this is something we need to have been, we, 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 we really should be able to take for granted. Mm -hmm. But given our history, unfortunately, we will not take that it for granted. Out of. Yes, that we will not take it for granted because one, there's anger in the land. People are not happy. In River State, up to this moment, I'm sure the election there has not been concluded. I get you. I get and you we mean. know what happened in the River State, and it's still happening. Killings. So this is a, these, these are urgent times, and um, everybody needs to just, as it were, take a chill pill, so to exactly. speak, exactly, and uh, just wait on you know a logical process to take place, which exactly. is evaluation of, of, of this advice and what led to it, to it. and then we'll take it from there. Sure. And, so that uh, we don't have too much yes. in our hands that and then we then cannot needful. deal with. Indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Colonel. That's where we're going to have to leave it. Uh, Colonel Mike uh, Abiodun Oladeji retired. Thank you very, very much for coming on and giving us the benefit of your insights. Thank and you, also sir. to uh, Innocent uh, Chukuma, Regional Director of Ford Foundation and uh, Election Security Specialist. Thank you very much as well, Innocent, for coming along. See you tomorrow, God willing, with a fresh edition of the program. I'm Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now.